Yo, what's up guys? Here's Amir. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on actively cooled reactors. So, here's everything that you're going to need. You're going to need turbine housing, glass, controller, fluid port, power port, rotor bearing, shaft, blade, and a block of gold or other type of material. I'll talk about that um, more in depth later. So, coming over here, you're starting off with your basic passively cooled reactor. Um, there's one major difference though. One thing I did not mention was that you need a reactor coolant port which is one of these things right here so when you add this to your reactor it makes it a actively cooled reactor so what that means is it changes the interface all up in here so you got two major things right now you got your coolant fluid tank which is where your water is stored and your hot fluid tank which is where steam is stored um, now the steam goes into here which is what makes the turbine um, spin its uh, shaft and everything and its blades. So coming over here, you see that I have the shell. It's pretty much basically built exactly like a uh, like a reactor. The shell is made out of the turbine housing with glass in the middle or turbine housing in the middle, whichever you uh, prefer. I like the glass personally. So it's built just like that. It's got a turbine controller. Um, fluid port, a power port, so it's got that, and then right at the back here, this is the thing that's different. In the, it's five by five, and in the center of that uh, that square, you have a turbine rotor bearing. Now from here, you're gonna extend uh, the turbine rotor shaft the entire way to right there, because right here, you're gonna build a three by three square. Now there's different materials that you can um, build this coil out of which is what it's called on the FTB wiki you're gonna find different equations and different um, numbers that say different efficiencies for this so it all is just depending on what you have and what you feel best about using so check out the FTB wiki on that so extending the turbine rotor shaft from the rotor bearing down the length to the center of this right here and then from here you're going to start wanting to add your rotor blades. Now, you can figure out the number of rotor blades you need by accessing the um by accessing the turbine controller on the turbine whenever it's turned on, and that'll tell you the exact number. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I come into here. It's not a multi-block structure. That's why I have to finish it off. So coming up here, I'm going to fill the gaps in that I made to get access. So just filling that up with turbine glass. Alright, boom, multi-block structure. As you can see, the shaft extends from the coil, the center of the coil, to the rotor bearing. And covered in blades. It's coming back over here, now it's a multi-block structure. Right here is the rotor efficiency. Now, because it's not turned on right now, does not show how many uh, blades it needs, but I'll show you guys that later. Well, I might as well go over the layout now. So RPM is rotor speed. Um, it works best at between 900 and 1800 RPM, so you want to aim for one of those. And that's your energy output. You don't actually get energy from the uh, reactor anymore. It's all coming from your turbine. And then here's the energy buffer, your water, um, your steam, and then your rotor speed um, gauge. So, the problem with these things is that the amount of steam needed uses a lot of water, which comes from here. Now, as you can see, it's filled up to the brim right now. Um, and I'm going to show you how you guys how to set that up. So, coming over here is where you have a bunch of aqueous accumulators all getting their water taken into this thing right here which is the computer so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna empty out my inventory and then I'm gonna show you guys uh, exactly what you need to build the setup that I have here so you're gonna need ME controller an ME fluid terminal an ME drive ME cable a ME fluid import bus an ME fluid export bus a fluid duct and an aqueous accumulator so now like I said before this thing uses a ton of water, so you, you gotta keep it um, 
Gotta keep it filled up. Now you can just use a bunch of aqueous accumulators connected with fluid ducts and put them into a bunch of different um, f uh, reactor coolant ports. But I mean, uh, I think that tends to make the reactor look a bit ugly. So I like to keep it um, a little more trimmed up, a little more clean. So that's why I'm going the computer out to show you guys. So coming over here, you have three basic terminals. You have your ME drive, your ME fluid terminal, ME controller, and this is just an optional one. You don't actually need this one, but it's an ME access terminal. So looking in here, um, you need two, well, one thing really. Well, you need uh, some way to store your fluid. So what you need is an ME fluid storage, and these come in different sizes, not just 64K. Um, I think it's the 1K, 16K, and so on and so forth. And it stores a certain amount of uh, fluid in there. And in here, you're going to see I have 14 kilo buckets of water. And that's just chilling in there right now. So I have uh, two sets of six aqueous accumulators set up here with water on each side. So all the water is just coming into here. It's going down. It's getting filled back up by the aqueous accumulator. See that? And then on top of this, I have ME fluid import buses which imports the water from this to the computer. If I right click on that, I want to move on default it's set to um, 20 millibuckets a tick, but you want to click left click on that twice and move it to a thousand uh, millibuckets a tick because that's going to get maximum water into your computer for moving it from here to there. And you're going to hook all this up with ME cable, hook it up to your computer um, both sets. As you can see right here, it's nice and clean, it's nice and easy, it's not too hard to do. And then from to get the water from your computer to your reactor, you're going to take the ME cable, just run it along, and you're going to make it to the reactor, and you're going to plug a ME fluid export bus with a bucket of water in there, also make that a thousand millibuckets a tick like I showed you previously into a reactor coolant port and you're going to want to make that blue by using a wrench all right so you got your water situation sorted out now it's getting water it's getting plenty of water now to get the steam from the reactor into the turbine is easy red reactor coolant port with a fluid duct just taking the steam from there to there into a red um turbine fluid port and that gets your steam there fills it nice and up easy now a byproduct of the turbine is water as you can see exhaust fluid tank pretty much what we're going to do is just recycle the water from the turbine back into the reactor so from here you got a blue uh, turbine fluid port fluid ducts moving the water back into a blue reactor coolant port and um, that's just gonna allow you to recycle the water from your turbine to your reactor. So let's power these up. I'm going to activate that and activate that. And ooh, one more thing to note, your computer does need power. I just have it powered up here um, through a the passively cooled reactor that I had earlier built. Um, it's just uh, using redstone energy conduits. You can use whatever you want um, that works to power your computer, just so that it has energy. So, these things are getting all fired up, the steam's coming, the water's coming into your reactor, everything's looking good. You got your power tap, everything's going good for the turbine. It is starting to spin up slowly. Now, let's take a look at this inside here. As your reactor and turbine start to um, build up, these things in here are going to start telling you things. So, the react rotor speed it's going to tell you how fast it's moving. You want to hit that 900 or 1800 RPM. Over here, it's going to be a, a, a green area that you want to target in this uh, gauge right here. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, the rotor efficiency. If I hover over this as the reactor or as the turbine warms up and it gets to prime speed, this is going to tell me how many blades I should have. And right now, I have 14. So it's going to tell me 14 slash out of how many blades should I have? So if I needed 16 blades, it'd say 14 slash 16. And 100% means I'm running at 100% efficiency. That means it's great, nothing's being wasted. 
this is my energy output right now it's moving up it's at 208 uh, RF a tick so the rotor speed moves up slowly the steams come in the waters come in energy buffer now I usually have it set to vent overflow only which means that if there's any um, overflow of exhaust fluid it's just gonna dump it and you're gonna lose it so that way it doesn't stop your turbine from uh, working properly now max flow this is something that's extremely important the max flow um, it stipulates whether or not your um, RPM is h higher or lower so where you get that from is if you check this out right in here um, you need to find like a happy medium between how much water you can pump in and how many RPMs now I did this earlier and I found that at 250 millibuckets a tick flow it holds it steady at around 1800 RPM which is max efficiency so this is capable of I think 294 but I bumped it down so that the turbine could better handle the um, RPM and everything but you just go in here this is going to show you the hot fluid output um, it says 250 millibuckets a tick check it in here you want to make that equal or something that gets you in the green so right there that's in the green it's at a thousand RPM but pretty soon it'll go back to the light blue which is slightly less efficient which will knock your RF down as you can see right there before it was much higher but as this hits the 1700 range this is going to go skyrocketing again and that's pretty much it as you can see the water um, it's dropping because so much water is getting used but I got that thousand millibuckets uh, a tick coming in here from my computer and also being recycled from um, the turbine to the reactor my steam's at full everything's looking good I'm producing lots of energy um, let's take one more look and it's about at 1300 rpm right there it's moving beautifully as you can see it's such a cool animation um, that the big reactors mod has on it I mean just a big old reactor spinning around producing tons of energy so that's pretty much it guys um, if you guys have any uh, comments or questions just put it in the comment section and I'll try and get an answer back check out that FTB wiki to check out different efficiencies on your coil here you can go too thick um, one thick whatever um, check everything out on there and have a good one I'm out Peace, guys.